Well, my name is Herb Loss, you know that. Uh, some of you may or may not know that uh, I used to be a uh, Philadelphia Eagle football player. I played under Dick Vermeil in the 70s. Uh, I was known as the praying tailback because most of the praying that you see now in the end zone, by the grace of God, I was the first NFL player to, to kneel down and give thanks to God for uh, his goodness and his greatness in my life. When I got drafted by the Philadelphia Eagles, I told them I would play three years, and after three years, I would quit and go into some form of ministry, didn't know what type. And so I quit to go into ministry after three years. Everyone thought I was losing my mind, but I felt the hand of God on my life. And I looked at football very seriously, and the best I could do in football was to score a touchdown, get a first down, kick a field goal. That was about it. No substance. And so I wanted to do something better with my life, and I didn't know whether I'd be a preacher or what, but I knew after three years I'd quit. I quit after three years, and I got called uh, after finishing my uh, undergrad and graduating from the Reformed Episcopalian Seminary. I uh, got called to a church in Philadelphia called Greater Exodus. I had 17 members, two mortgages, church in bankruptcy court. $32,000 gas bill, of $500,000 worth of structural damage uh, with $300 in the bank. <laughs> and my first meeting, the deacon said, Pastor, what are we going to do? <laughs> I never will forget it as, as long as I live, but uh, <laughs> uh, my father, who pastors in Monterey, California, when, he, when, I, when I showed him the church and the buckets, when it rained, you just had buckets catching water all over the place. I said, Dad, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. He said, boy, when you left the Eagles, I thought you were crazy. But now I know you lost your mind. <laughs> but uh, by the grace of God, to make a long story short, that ministry uh, that was uh, failing in the inner city uh, with 17 active members have now grown uh, to over 2,000 members. Uh, amen. Uh, and the ministry has expanded in the community in such a way that uh, hundreds of, of people have been trained and mentored. Uh, our People for People program now, uh, we have over 200 full-time employees. Uh, we took a building over about 100,000 square feet with, for $1 several years ago. We just refinanced that building we got for a dollar for $15 million. And so God is still in the blessing business, folks. Amen. And uh, I can go on and on and tell you many of the things that uh, has been accomplished because of so many great people, many of them in this room. Uh, I can tell you about uh, our Stand for Africa ministry, where now we're in uh, several countries uh, working with uh, the uh, people indigenous in Africa to help them to do that, that God has called them to do. It goes on and on and on. Now the presidents and the poor have bowed down together between those walls. There is no secret what God can do. And there's some of you out there that are probably struggling, that some of you out there who have ministries and you don't know quite uh, how to start or what to do. Let me just share with you that you are in a very ripe age. And you're in an age where if you will stand for God, God will stand for you. And there's no, there, there has been no time in the history of humanity where we have been challenged and faced with the issues that we're facing today. Uh, we've got right now in Philadelphia, as I speak, there is a plan to have a, a gay month celebration in the school district. We're still struggling about our sexuality, whether we should be husband and wife, or wife and wife, or husband and husband. These are issues that are critical in our society today, and, and it just goes on and on and on. I can name one after the other, and all of these present to us are opportunities. Not to mention uh, this whole business of what they, they call the Da Vinci Code, challenging the theology of the church. And I think that was the most lame brain movie that has ever been produced. Amen lights. Uh, how in the world can you tell me that, that there's a secret that Jesus is married uh, to a woman and someone, and the church kept that secret for over 2,000 years? I don't know what church they're talking about, but <laughs> you, my church couldn't keep that for two seconds.
Well, Pastor, how, 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 how did you do it, Pastor? What, how did you come from 17 active members to, to the point now where you have a thriving ministry and you're reaching out into the community? Right now, we're training 1,000 welfare recipients a year in computers and getting them jobs. How do you get to the point where you're mentoring children and mentoring children of inmates? How do you get to the point where now you are doing the things that are affecting change in the lives of people? Well, my friends, I, I do believe this with all of my heart. We need more, more, more zeal. I believe that with all of my heart. I think the church of the living God is letting God down. Bin Laden can say to one of his members, get in a plane and, and, and hijack it with a razor blade and drive it into a building and kill 3,000 people and we can't get our folk to come to 3.30 afternoon service. Oh yeah, well, we have lost our zeal. We've lost it, we've lost it, we've lost it. And, and, and there's a passage that I just want to share briefly. I don't have time. Before long, they're going to be telling me to sit down. But let me get it in before I sit down. Uh, in Matthew 11, 12, it says this, From the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven is forcibly advancing. And they that lay hold to it, they do it by force. I believe that in order for us to accomplish what God wants us to accomplish today, we need to have the zeal of a zealot. We've got to understand that this thing is about confrontation now. No more of uh, beating Mr. Nice Guy. Jesus said, I came with a sword. He was not a pacifist. I mean, uh, y'all, I wish somebody, Jesus was not a pacifist. And I say, Jesus was not a pacifist. As a matter of fact, he said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. There is no other way. There is no other truth. We're too busy trying not to be in confrontation. I'm telling you right now that we have to have the zeal of the zealot. And sometimes we've got to do more than maintain the status quo. We've got to stand. And if we have to fight, we have to fight. Somebody ought to say amen. He's not a pacifist. He's not a, I come with a sword, he said. He was a revolutionary person. He was a revolutionary personality. Over and over again, there was confrontation. Wherever Jesus was, somebody had to make a decision. And so we need the zeal of a zealot to make it, and we need the attitude of an athlete. And I had to say that, of course, that's my background. <laughs> Uh, but, but, but we need the attitude of an athlete. I am so sick and tired of half brain moping and groping Christians walking around like it looks like they need a VA. We need the attitude of an athlete. We need to be diligent. Paul knows what I'm talking about. He said, I press toward the mark or the prize of a high calling of God. Over and over again, he uses the terms of athletes. When I was in pro football, we had a thing called yak yards. And yak yards stand for yards after contact. You determine the greatness of a running back not by how many yards he gained uh, when he went through a hole that was wide open, but you determine his greatness by how many yards he got after he had been hit. And my friends, I think that's how you will establish your greatness for Jesus Christ. It will be after they have talked about you. It will be after they have lied about you. It will be after they said it's not going to work. It will be after they say that you don't have enough uh, intellectual properties. It will be after they've said all of those things. And when you show them how many yards you can gain after you've been hit, then we'll be able to change our communities. Job knows what I'm talking about. Uh, they went to Job and said, Job, your family is gone. All your stuff is gone. And, and Job, Job started making yak yards. <laughs> after he had lost his wife, after he had lost his children, after he had lost his cattle, after he had lost everything, I heard Job say, though he slay me, yet will I trust in him. I know my Redeemer liveth, and, and I'm going to wait until my change come. Somebody here ought to say amen. then we need the guts of a gladiator. Amen. Some, 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 I want you to understand that every prophet in the Old Testament died because he stood for the kingdom. And somebody has to get to the point in this Christian ministry, Bin Laden doesn't have a problem asking people to give their lives. Somebody's got to be ready to die. Somebody here has to realize that Jesus says that he that seeketh to save his life will lose it. Somebody has to remember what Paul said. Paul said uh, uh, that, that, that for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. 
the guts of a gladiator. Somebody has to remember uh, what happened with Jacob and that angel wrestled with him all night long. And at the end of it, in the morning, the angel tried to call time out. And Jacob said, oh, ain't no time out. I ain't going to let you go until I get my blessing. And then we need, finally, and I'll sit down. I think I got a little bit more time left, don't I? We need the spirit of a soldier. Of a soldier. If you want to turn your communities around, you need to have the spirit of a soldier. In other words, my friends, some things you're going to have to fight for. The devil has taken a whole lot of our stuff, taken our families, taken our homes, taken our marriages, taken our health, taken our joy, our minds, and many of our dreams have been taken. We have to fight to get them back. The devil got some crazy folk out there, but I've got the, some news for you. I've met some folk that are crazier, that can out-crazy the devil. <laughs> are y'all hearing what I'm saying? <laughs> and that's what has to happen. We have to get to the point where we're out-crazy the devil. He has set up strongholds in our community. Strongholds. And i got to tell you, somebody may have to get me out of jail because I am going to fight as hard as I can about that gay month. I'm going to fight. Get me out of jail, somebody, because I'm going. Somebody here ought to say amen. And so, and so he set up strongholds, and they're trying to set up strongholds in our schools, strongholds in our jobs, strongholds. And we have to fight. I say we have to fight. And, but our weapons that we fight with are not carnal. Oh, y'all hear what I'm saying? We, 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 part, part of what we fight with is, is prayer. John talked about it this morning. Uh, we also fight in our worship and in our praise that in spite of everything, we still need to praise God. And then, most importantly, we need to fight with the Word of God. Amen. I close with this. We fight with the Word of God. Of God. I said we fight with the word of God. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. We fight with the word of God. Amen. And we don't argue the word of God. We, 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 do you know what God has said about us in his word? They that, 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 that bless you, I will bless them. They that curse you, I will curse them. Do you have any idea what God is saying in his word for you and I? We've got to use that word. And, and don't argue. Please don't, don't waste your time arguing God's word. I like what Martin Luther King said. Martin Luther said. Martin Luther said this. Martin Luther says, the word of God is like a lion. You don't, you, don't have to, you don't have to defend it. Just let it loose. Come on here, somebody talk to me. The word of God is like a lion. You do not have to defend it. All you have to do is let it loose. I wish somebody here would say, let it loose. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. And whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foe came up on me to eat my flesh, they stumbled and fell. I wish somebody would say, let it loose. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. I wish somebody would say, let it loose, Reverend. Hallelujah. Thank you for telling me to let it loose. Uh, there is no weapon formed on earth that shall prosper against you and I. We are going to make it all things are possible with God. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Hath thou not known, hath thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Father, the creator of the ends of the earth, he fainteth not, neither if there's no searching in his understanding. He giveth power to the faint. Am I right about it, somebody? Hallelujah. And they that wait upon the Lord. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You may have to wait in your tears. You may have to wait in your heartache. You may have to wait in your sadness. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. Come on here, white folks. Somebody say amen. 
You hear us black folks saying amen, you come on with us. We do this sometime. We have church like this sometime. Come on, white man. Say hallelujah. Somebody say let it loose. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew. I may not get a chance to get back here. Let me, I want to holler for a minute. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Uh, they shall mount up with wings like eagles. They'll run and not be weary. They'll walk and not faint. And somebody say, well, I don't like flying. Well, that's what I like about God. If you don't like flying, you can run and not be weary. And if you can't run and you're too crippled, don't worry about it. You can walk and not faint. Somebody here ought to say, turn it loose, Reverend. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All hail the power of Jesus' name. That's all I'm trying to do. I hope that you're seeing Jesus. I, I was a football player. I don't know how to preach like, like this and verily, verily. I don't know how to do it like that. I came from the grid out. And when I played football, I gave the Lord everything I had. And when I get in this pulpit, I want to give him everything I had. All hell, the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate forth. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him. Crown him, crown him, crown him, crown him, crown him, yes, yes, yes.